Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record live every Monday. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button. And if you want to submit to be on the show, take a look at the information in the description. Jamie in the 413, which is in Western Massachusetts. Jamie's got a little collusion uh, scenario for us. What's up, Jamie? How you doing? Hey, how are you, Bart? Good. Yeah, so this happened at Encore Boston Harbor uh, sometime in late winter, maybe February or March, just before the shutdown. Okay. Um, and I think it's important to get a bit of backstory on uh, sort of the environment of poker in Boston before I jump into the exact hand. Mm -hmm. um, but before Encore Boston Harbor opened, there was no uh, there was no poker in Boston. Um, couple casinos maybe an hour and a half away but this created uh, a huge underground home game network as you'll see in a lot of places without regulated poker right um and in plo specifically which is what i play mostly there was uh there's a small group of players in the player pool so a lot of these guys know each other is uh is what i'm trying to say they're uh -huh. sort of um a network of of plo players who are um who are pretty comfortable with each other who know each other um so when Encore Boston Harbor did open up, uh, and I started playing in there. I soon began to see uh, these relationships of people that had been playing with each other for a long time. By the way, so um, I'm going to add to this too because I'm from the Boston area. What you're talking about is is that really the closest sort of card rooms before New Hampshire poker came around was Foxwoods and then Twin River. It was always Foxwoods was the closest one until the last few years, then Twin River and Providence, then some New Hampshire stuff opened up, and now uh encore boston which is funny enough because now they've taken their poker room out with covid uh another quick thing here too to add there aren't plo is not a huge thing in new england somebody told me there's like a 5 10 20 game at boston billiards in in nashua new hampshire caller does that sound accurate to you uh that game goes rarely okay. they do uh spread plo there five five and occasionally there's a couple whales that drive uh right. the bigger game but yeah so maybe your point is is that this is a small player pool these guys have played in home games because there wasn't many games spread and especially in plo right that's exactly okay it. yep um so i play on the weekends there i actually live in western mass but i i drive into the city for uh for poker on the weekends so i'm um semi-familiar with uh, with a lot of the players in this game, enough so that I can recognize some of this um, uh, this inner circle, I'm using air quotes there, um, of guys that know each other. And the reason that I'm aware of it is because of this uh, pseudo-collusion or soft play uh, that really affects the game. Um, I've been hyper-aware of it from almost the beginning, and it's just something that I keep in mind when I notice a number of these players at the same table. Okay. Um, so the, the night in question, uh, nine-handed, three of the guys there, are, are part of this uh, this sort of inner circle, and it's definitely affecting gameplay. There's been a couple hands where uh, they've bet a third or even fourth player out of the pot, and then after it's heads up, they agree to check it down, uh, regardless of what street it's on. Um, and when I noticed this, wait, 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 they, you're saying that like, so. For example, the two guys that know each other. Let's say one's player one one's player three, player two is not a part of this group. So player one might bet, player two calls, player three raises, player one either re-raises or calls, player two folds, and then they check it down on subsequent streets? That's exactly it. Well, that's fucking, <laughs> come on. I mean, that's, I mean, that I would bring that up immediately. If you're playing in, I mean, if you're if it's a home game, like I said, you have to sort of navigate different things like in home games like sometimes and especially too like in la like i've played in a few home games there are some strong whether you want to call it ethnic sort of ties cultural things like especially with and i'm just gonna i'm gonna say it it's not racist or anything like that with armenians armenians what i noticed in la was they don't like to bet against each other so what will happen is is that that scenario and the Armenians are big time gamblers too. You want them in the game. They're there just to have a good time. But that scenario will happen, but they're not really actually colluding against you. It's just they have hands, but they, they don't bet against sort of their brethren. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and I feel like this really comes close to towing the line. Um, I, I don't know how well 
these guys actually know each other, if they're splitting money in the parking lot after the game or not. I, I have no proof of that. But what I have seen is them raising someone out of the pot um, or just soft playing each other um, if it's only the two of them in the pot. So not putting more money in when they're heads up, uh, but often being aggressive when there's another player in the pot. Um, and I'm, I'm vocal about this when I see it. I, I often tell the person who got bet out of the pot uh, that that's p- potential collusion, um, that it's not allowed, they're not allowed to verbalize, that they're going to check it down. Um, I often bring it up with the dealer, uh, and I'm usually just met with shrugs. Let me ask you a question, Jamie. By the way, this is why the rule is in play, because this is, I would, uh, you know, I, I said right away this is bullshit, but let, um, let me take a step back here for a second here, too. And this is, again, navigating live poker. Part of the reason why the rule that you can see a winning hand is there in a cash game and, it, you know, 99% of the time it's it's misused and people are just trying to get information. They're trying to take advantage of the rule is for this reason, is for collusion. So if I saw this go down and I was raised out of the pot and I saw it happen a couple of times, I would start to ask to see the hands that won at showdown and uh, or, or ask to see losing hands. And if it made sense, the hand made sense and they weren't squeezing somebody out, you can make your own interpretation about it. This is what I would do. Then they could just be friends and they're really not trying to necessarily take advantage of other people. Of course, you get into that situation that we've talked about before where they're sort of accidentally colluding with sort of best handing people, but there might be some more information to use to you. Um, get a, a better scope of the story instead of, I'm not saying you're saying this, but some people just be like, that's collusion, that's it, you know, which I think is taking it too far because I've seen friends or husbands and wives, they're clearly not trying to angle anybody, check it down, or they don't bet against each other. So there's more to it. But it sounds to me like you think that these guys are doing it like as an advantage or are they just friends? It's really tough to say. Um, and, and I'm really on the fence about it. I would never you know, point the finger and call them out directly and say, you two are colluding, like this is against the rules. Um, But I do think it's important enough to bring up uh, publicly in front of the table and say, um, like, that's that's not right to bet someone out of the pot and to to check it down afterwards. Um, And after hearing you say that about uh, about the house rule of seeing both hands, I've only ever seen the uh, winning hand as as far as I would know. Uh, I've never demanded to see both hands in the pot to see if it has made sense. And the winning By the way, that's a move. I mean, that's a that's a, something that you can use to your advantage too. Like, I would be almost to the point where you said that you've spoken up, like in public, about it. But you can also start to do that for two reasons, right? To see the hands, but then it also indicates should indicate to those players that you're going to see the losing hands because you think that something's up, whether or not they change or they it 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 um trip something in their head to stop the behavior. But if, anyways, let's say that you come to the conclusion you're uncomfortable doing this. You don't think it's fair. You think it's bullshit. I would definitely t- explain to the floor what is going on away from the table. Maybe at some time when the game isn't going. Hey, I play like this high stakes PLO game. You guys have one table here. I'm not trying to cause an issue, but you've got these guys that are clearly raising other people out of the pot and then checking it down. How can you allow that to happen? And there's only really probably only one one, couple PLO tables going. So I would think that the floor or the supervisor would then be able to communicate that through the dealers that deal in that game and say, hey, we can't allow this to go on anymore. That's how I would make, that's how I would approach the situation. Right, which is, um, about how I went about it. Um, I unfortunately waited until it negatively affected me. Uh, the hand in question, I raised, was raised, was raised, I jam. Um, we end up three ways all in. Um, and the other two people in the pot verbalize to each other and they say, check it down. And I hit the brakes there. I say, whoa, whoa, uh, call the floor over. The dealer is like hesitant. So, you're, so you were in over. the pot and you fold it. Right? Is that what you're saying? No, no. Sorry, I'm I'm all in. I'm oh, you're all. Pot. I'm all in. Okay. The other two players are all in as well, and they verbalize to each other, "Check it down." Oh, they have money. Oh, behind. that's interesting, because that's happened to me before. So, what again to make this clear is is that you're all in, and obviously PLO is a drawing game, so you can actually be at a large inherent disadvantage because there's no betting. 
where standard play, one person could bet the other person out of the pot, right? Let's say you've got like a nut made hand and somebody else has got like a sort of a second nut made hand or medium strength hand and one guy's on a draw, that second guy could be betting out the other guy with the draw on the side and should be. But if they just check it down, that guy gets a free look at it, right? So it's you're literally yeah, playing against exactly two hands, it. basically, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It. So uh, we're in this position. Uh, it's pre-flop. I'm all in. Two other players, money behind. Uh, they verbalize to each other, check it down. I put up a stink. The dealer's a bit hesitant to call the floor, doesn't think it's a big uh, deal. I insist. Floor comes over. I explain the situation. Floor is like... I can see in her eyes, like, what am I supposed to do here? Uh, she says to the players, like, uh, you, you can't do that. You can't say check it down. His money's in the pot. Uh, she stands over the dealer's shoulders as he uh, puts out a board, and they, of course, check it down. Um, I end up it, – it's actually quite similar to, um, to what you described, not that it really matters, mm-hmm. um, but make, make top set against um, maybe, like, uh, a two-pair combo – and then uh, the third player gets there on the river. Gets free cards uh, so, and makes a draw at the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. So as you, uh, as you said, I mean, the other player who made two pair would probably have bet flop. Anyways, regardless of how it played out, um, I got up and I had a conversation with the floor about it, and she just wasn't very um, understanding of the situation. I don't think she, she saw the problem. Um, I asked to speak to uh, to somebody else if there was somebody above her I could speak to, uh, and she helped me out. And she called over. I think it was like a senior floor manager. Yeah. And I spoke to him about it, and his attitude was, uh, "Our dealers are professionally trained. They know what to look for in collusion. Uh, they would speak out about it immediately as they saw it." And I said, "Listen, like you, the, the dealer." I, I wouldn't be happy verb- with that. I wouldn't ha- be happy with that response if I were you. That's for they sure. They verbalized it. Yeah. They <laughs> said, "Check it down," and and the dealer did nothing. So I said, "That that's not the situation." And he uh, he wouldn't budge. He just assured me, "No, our dealers are professional. They would never let that happen." Um, basically saying that I must be mistaken. Well, I mean, well, let me ask you this question. So how many sessions, like what session number were you in? Was this the first time you noticed these guys doing this or have you had you played many times before with these guys? Yeah, this would probably be session, uh, let's say once a week since the fall session 20 uh, in this specific game and the player pool. So wait a minute, Jimmy, uh, I don't mean to come after you. So you've played 20 sessions with these guys, 20 20 sessions sessions with these guys, and this hasn't been addressed this game. Um, we, not to this extent. It hasn't been addressed to this extent. I'm not the only person that's noticed it. I'm not the only person that's uh, called them out about it. But it usually never goes anywhere other than a little bit of table talk, maybe a dealer warning. Uh, it's to just, my knowledge, this is the first time the floor has been involved. Here's the thing. What's bizarre to me about this story, and I, and I believe you, like I, you have no, yeah, I, I'm sure it's accurate. And there has been have been questions about some of these calls, especially the one that I put up on Friday about the accuracy of that ruling because they're some stuff that might not make sense. This makes clear sense. But what I would say, though, what is surprising about this is that if these guys have been playing since the fall and it's, and they do this shit every single time, that complaint from any of the players that aren't in that group about them colluding has never made it up to that shift supervisor that you talked to. Like he responded like he didn't know what the hell you were talking about. This is the first time. And obviously it hasn't been conveyed to the dealers. That's astounding. I mean, if you want my advice, I would stop playing in the game with these guys or I I would try to convey the point or try to get other players that are not on in this group on your side, possibly approach this shift supervisor. You know, I don't know if you know the floor people, like if there's one particular person that you think actually might understand PLO more than others, get a group, try to go to them and be like, this can't be. But I I can just tell you that in my, if if this was happening to me in my game, there's no way that it would be 20 sessions where the management didn't know what was going on. I would make it a point to that the management would know what's going on after that period of time. And if they did nothing about it, then I would stop playing there. 
Yeah, I, I, totally you know, fair. It's, you know, I mean, it just seems really, really strange that 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 person would be oblivious to this if it's been going on for that long. So, what are you doing now about it, basically? I live in Southern California. Now. Oh, so this is a while back, basically. Yeah, this was pre-COVID, just before uh, just before Encore shut down, and then uh, I moved here. So, uh, yeah, playing in Southern California. So I got away from the situation, which is fine. Um, but to your point, I think the, um, I think the reason it, it never escalated or got brought up maybe to a floor manager, or if it had brought up, been brought up to a floor manager, was never escalated from there is because of how closely it, it toes a line. Um, it's so difficult to prove collusion or that the collusion is, um, is done on purpose. And like you said, there's just some, some groups or some players, uh, whatever it may be that just don't want to be aggressive with each other. And it, where do we, how do we draw that line? How do we make that distinction of, well, oh, I, these guys I, are just friends and it's okay, well, or this is against the rules? While I agree with you in that aspect, though, you know, you have a game that's probably, you said 2-2 two, two PLO. There's only going like one or two tables. It's a very small player pool. If enough people go up to the right person, they're going to, something should be done about that. Um, I mean, that's just sort of clear cut. Again, I don't know if these guys are just friends if they're or they don't know that it, it's not good to do that like i said in plo you get like a lot of gambler types where you know it's splashy splashy have a good time but it's it's definitely um a very awkward uh type of situation i appreciate the call good luck at the outdoor tables in southern california thank you very much right. Bart. if you like what you've seen here please hit the subscribe button and if you enjoyed this call in hand hit the like button down below to check out crushlivepoker.com click on the link in the description use the code yta300 to get the first 30 days for free